Hi, my name is Stefan. I'm one of the developers here at Code Institute, and this is our video on Django. But before we start, please like, follow, subscribe, and share. Django is a mature framework written in Python that has been around since 2003. It aims to make software development projects easier to build. Django was initially developed as an in-house framework to manage a series of online news websites. Many projects can have a common set of core issues, in addition to project-specific ones. This is where Django comes in. As the Django Software Foundation, DSF, puts it, Django makes it easier to build better web apps more quickly and with less code. So you can focus on writing your app without needing to reinvent the wheel. Django grew organically from real-world applications written by a web development team in Kansas, USA, when programmers began using Python to build applications at the Lawrence Journal World newspaper. The World Online team, responsible for the production and maintaining several local news sites, thrived in a development environment dictated by journalism deadlines. There were three online newspapers owned and supported by the team, ljworld.com, lawrence.com, kusports.com. The journalists demanded that features be added and entire applications be built on incredibly short deadlines. To avoid repeatedly building the same types of pages, the developers set about building a framework that suited their needs under such pressure. They called the framework Django, after a sharded love of the jazz guitarist Django Reinhardt. Two years later, the developers publicly released its code source, and the Django team developed and contributed to the open source model. Because Django was created in a news environment, it has built-in features that are very suited to content management, such as an admin interface where developers and users can add and edit content and elements through a backdoor interface available only for authorized users. Most data-driven web applications require some administration screens to add and modify data, whether that data includes registered users on the site or products being sold. In keeping with its dry philosophy, it allows you to administer your model data through a web page, courtesy of the built-in administration module, thus saving you from having to build your own from scratch. And to enable the existence of authorized and authenticated users, Django comes with a pre-built authentication functionality. But don't think that Django is limited to just content management. It's much more powerful and flexible than that. Django works brilliantly with databases. The framework can take developer-defined Python classes, known as models, and automatically create database tables and their relationships for us. Also, any changes to models can be automatically reflected in database schemas. This pattern is known as Object Relational Mapping, ORM. A model is the single definitive source of information about your data. It contains the essential fields and behaviors of the data you're storing. Generally, each model maps to a single database table. To quickly get up and running, Django comes with the SQLite database for development and testing. Like other full-stack frameworks, such as Ruby, on Rails, etc., Django adheres to the philosophy of the convention over configuration. This means that the developer only needs to specify the unconventional aspects of the application. For example, if there's a class called blog in our model, the framework will create a corresponding table in the database that is called blog by default. It is only if you stray from this convention, such as calling the table the blog table, that you need to explicitly write code to do that. Uh, so before you can use Django, you'll actually need to install the Django package. And I'm going to use pip, uh, the Python package manager, to install the package. Um, so I'm just going to go to a terminal, say pip install Django. And that will just download it and install the Django package. And now I can use um, the Django admin commands um, to start a new project. So I'm going to say Django admin start project called my project. And that will create the base folder structure um, with a folder in it um, that has the same name, a settings file, a URLs file, and other. Uh, files that help with the serving the, the files. And then Django structures um, itself with apps. So you'd have an apps for, let's say, your products, an app for users, an app for your favorites, etc. And I'm just going to say, again, the Django admin command you can use. So Django admin start app. 
my app. Oh, actually, I need to go into my folder first. So my project and then say Django start up my app. And then we'll create a new folder for my app. Again, it has a lot of templates pre-created, uh, like the models for database uh, schemas, tests for tests that we can write, uh, and views for to serve uh, our HTML files. Um, so now I'm just going to write a, a basic Hello World um, app. And what I'll first do is I'll create a new templates folder in my app. And that will just have all my HTML templates. Uh, so templates, and then create an index HTML file. And I'm just going to give it a basic structure. Um, head, title, and then a body. I'm going to say hello world here. And save that. Um, then I need a view to serve that file. And I'm just going to go to the views py file um, to create that. So I'm going to define an index function. I'm going to pass in my request. And then I'm just going to return um, my and render my template. Index.html. Save that. And now I have to enable my app in the settings. So I'm going to add it to the installed apps, my app. I'm also going to have to allow my host. And then in this instance, I'm just going to say star, so all hosts. Um, don't do this in production, but for local development, that's fine. Um, yes, and then I have to just add the root in. Um, so where to actually access um, that template. So I'm going to add a new file. So Django doesn't create them, so you can add it to the to the URLs py file here in the my project folder. But I'm just gonna usually you'd create a new file in the specific app and then import it into the the main URLs py file. So I'm just gonna say urls.py. I'm gonna import from django.urls port path. I'm gonna use that in a moment, and I'm gonna import the view. So from views import index, and I'm, I'm going to define my uh, URL patterns. So that's my roots here. I'm just going to declare my path now. And I'm not going to give it a prefix, but I'm then going to use my index function and give it a name as well. Just index. Make some quotes. <clears throat> and then now I have to import these uh, patterns into the main URLs py file. So I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to add the include, include function. I'm just going to say my path. And I'm, again, not going to give it a prefix. Just leave that empty. I'll just include my app.urls. That should work. And then to run <clears throat> so uh, a Django app, you can use the manage py file. So we're going to say Python, and I'm going to use Python 3 in this instance, so Python 3 manage py. And then first of all, what we'll have to actually do is to migrate um, our models. And that will, so running migrate will um, create our databases. Um, and Django has a lot of predefined uh, migrations. So you'll have, for example, your sessions that help with the authentication, a basic user model, and some other stuff. So I'm just going to run the migrate. And as you can see, it applies all the migration, which basically creates uh, your databases. And then to run our Django server, I'm just going to use, again, the same base command, Python 3 manage py. I'm going to say run server. And I have to define um, what host to allow. So I'm going to allow all hosts on my local machine. And I'm going to say, OK, at port 8000, that's where I can access it. I'm just going to run this now. And as you can see, I uh, started a development server. And it's serving on, on this address now locally. You can click on it, and it just says, hello world. Django has steadily become a favorite amongst the Python development community. DjangoSites.org lists 5,522 sites built with this framework, the most famous being Instagram and Discus. 
Because it's a free full stack framework, Django serves as a perfect starting point if you're new to web frameworks. In addition, its documentation is rich and mature, which is a major plus for anyone trying to tackle the intricacies of a data-driven project. Also, Django's admin interface is great for data entry and testing during early stages. To quote Django's official website, Django is a high-level Python web framework that encourages rapid development and clean, pragmatic design. Built by experienced developers, it takes care of much of the hassle of web development, so you can focus on writing your own app without needing to reinvent the wheel. It's free and open source. This was our video on the Django framework. And if you want to learn more about software development, go to our website at codeinstitute.net. You can also take part in our 5D Coden challenge with a link in the video description below. Don't forget to follow, share, subscribe, and like.